moving forward with step number 31. We're going to install our on-off switch first, and depending on what on-off switch you have, it may install just a little bit differently, so we'll go over both techniques. The first thing you're going to do is to take the little silicone switch seal, and you're going to poke it down through the hole that's on the bottom that's made for that, and it's, uh, I use the antenna to poke it down in. And it's just going to sit right down in. One thing that I did do is I am using screws to hold my my switch in. So I pre-poked the little indentation holes through there. Some of the switches don't use screws on them and there's a little retainer clip which we'll go over in just a minute. A couple of things to note is on the inside of the case here you're going to see that it says off and on and you're going to want to make sure that your switch corresponds with the off and on that's located on this and so what we're going to do is take a look at our switch and there's on Let's see if we can focus in here it says on and off on it and we're going to by default put the switch on off so then we're going to line up with the off that's on the inside of the case make sure that we're going in the right direction and we're going to slide the switch into the little switch area here and again we're going to double check we're off off is to the back of the case and that switch is going to slide down and sit right inside that little area in there some switches will utilize this little clip here which you see is part number 85404 and what you're going to do is you see there's a little locking tab on here and that's going to go towards the edge and into this little locking tab area on the box so you're going to go ahead and slide that down in and it's going to click into place this particular switch that I have as you can see the locking tab does not fall into place properly there's many different heights of switches so what I'm going to do with mine is I'm going to use the screws that came with the switch and I'm going to go ahead and put those in through the bottom here and you can choose either way or if you want you can do both these little uh, screws can sometimes really be a pain to get in because you're fighting with the, the switch and the alignment and also with the silicone shield that goes over it. So I'm going to see if I can do this successfully on film. I'll give it one try and if not I'll do it off film. And I drop my screwdriver. Again. I'm pretty good at that. Yeah, it's going to screw right in. And that's going to secure our on-off switch. See if the other one's going to go in as easily. Probably not. Well, shazam, look at that. <laughs> okay. I'm going to tighten it out down, snug it in. Don't want to over tighten it and strip it out, but we don't want them falling out. And then you're going to want to check and make sure that your switch operates properly and goes on and off. This one is working just fine. Now that the switch is installed, we are going to install our radio and there's many different places there's if you're using a big receiver you can see that there's four little notches in there that will allow the receiver to fall into place and we are going to use it fits right into the corner unit here and then rest against that bottom one and it's nice and secure so I think that's right where we're gonna put our radio our receiver so we're gonna get out a piece of two-sided tape which we have and 
We are also going to use and clean off the plastics because they use grease and, and whatnot. We're going to use some denatured alcohol on there and just quickly clean off the bottom of the radio receiver and then also clean off where the tape is going to stick on the inside of the battery box. It just gives us a better hold down. Ew, got something yucky on my fingers. When you put the receiver into the battery box, you're going to want to make sure that your antenna is pointing towards the little antenna area here. You don't want it to be switched around so your wire has to wrap back around. You want to put your wire to the closest point towards your antenna hole. It just helps keep everything clean inside. So we'll mount in our receiver box. Now, let's see if we can see this on the camera, but down inside the antenna holder, there's two holes. There's one closer to the back, and then there's also one up front directly below the tube holder. What we're going to want to do is thread our antenna down through the back hole and then make sure that uh, you don't want it pulled tight inside of the box. So generally I'm going to hold that down with my finger. And it just gives it a little bit of play in there. And now I'm going to thread <laughs> it's hard to do this on camera. I'm going to thread the antenna back up through the second hole. So you can see how it loops around here. And there's also a little notch in the radio box here. And that's where your antenna wire is going to sit through so it doesn't get caught on the lid when you close it. Next thing we're going to do is to install our antenna tube. And there's many different lengths of antennas and they give us a really nice long tube here. Some antennas you can use an end cap on, some you cannot, and you're going to refer to your radio's instructions on whether you should or not. Some antennas you want to hang out of the tube, and again, some you don't. So. We're going to, again, recommend that you look at your manual. So what you, I'm going to do is cut it. I'm going to measure about an eighth of an inch down, like it was sitting in there. I'm going to measure up for the antenna. And I like mine just to sit inside. I don't, this particular one I don't like to fold. So we're going to measure that, and we're going to use our hobby knife and cut the antenna off. I'm going to thread it down in through the tube and then seat the tube securely down inside the hole. Make sure that it is seated way down and seated in properly and make sure you don't crush your antenna tube but I, I like to use a pair of pliers and just feed it down a little bit just to make sure that it's all the way in. Make sure that it's secure. And I can see that my antenna is just coming to the edge of the tube, which is fine for me. And just to keep dirt out, I'm going to put a little cap on there. Now comes the fun part. You're going to plug in your servos. And with these, you're going to want to check again with your radio manufacturer to see how and where your different plugs go in, what kind of connectors and this and that. So again, we're not going to go over radios because there's just too many. However, this particular lead right here is for our servo, so we're going to plug it into our steering. And our spectrum is very plainly marked steering. And this one is for our throttle. 
And again, we're very, very plainly marked here, throttle. Going to plug that in. Make sure it sits all the way down. Now, as we discussed before, in the side of your radio box is a little groove here. And we're going to want to put the wires down in through that groove so that they sit properly without getting crunched by the, the top when you put it on. Some servo wires like this one are round and not flat. And if you untwist them, they usually fit right down inside of that little groove. Excuse me, because it's hard to do this and show because it's tight. But let me get these all down inside there, and I'll give you another look. You can see that that fits in there nice and clean. Sometimes you can put a little zip tie on the end here if you prefer. And you're going to have some leftover wire here. We are also going to plug in our battery lead, which is actually the switch lead. We're going to plug that into our battery area on the receiver. And then we're going to clean up the wires. A lot of times there's, there's extra room down in here. You can fold them up. You can put some zip ties on them if you choose. You can do it however you like, but you always want to keep a clean radio box in case something's going on. You can take a look in there and get it figured out. So that's how we're going to do ours. That concludes step number 31. We're going to go to step number 32, so go ahead and get all your parts laid out. Step number 32 is pretty straightforward. All we're going to do is install our battery. And basically, they all hook up the same. We're going to use the connector on the battery, the small connector, not the Tamiya connector, but the smaller one. And we're going to hook it up <coughs> excuse me, to the connector for the switch. And you want to make sure that your black wire goes to the black wire and the red wire to the red wire. Uh, my, all of my years of experience in RC has taught me to do one thing, if nothing else, and that is, is on your battery connector, tape it, because they can wiggle loose. Let me get a nice clean edge on my tape here. There we go. I and I hate when they come apart. So it's pretty simple. Just put a piece of electrical tape around it. So it doesn't pull apart. From there, we're going to take our battery and put it down into the battery hole does have foam in there, so you're going to have to work it with your thumb and your finger, and it slides right down inside. And we're going to tidy up the wire, get it out of the way, for a clean battery box. If you'll notice, the Tamiya plug is sitting out here, and we're going to deal with that in just a few minutes on the next step. Let's go ahead and dig out our parts for step number 33, and we'll get going on that one. <laughs> 